Liverpool 3, Fulham 1 and Liverpool are still very much in that title race with Manchester City and Arsenal not quite looking their best in recent games either and could easily drop points. So that win is absolutely huge for Liverpool but also huge mentally because it almost looked like they were a little bit down and out after that Atalanta game, the Manchester United game, you know, a few poorer results and it felt like they were never going to score an open play goal and once Gravenberg scored the whole game just went Liverpool at back. They looked back. It was not the best first half display from Liverpool, but it was a very, very good second half display from Liverpool. And a lot of the players looked a lot better in the second half. And I think in general, uh, Virgil van Dijk had a good game. Trent had a good game. Gravenberg had a good game. Jota had a good game. And of course, Cody Gappo had a very, very good game, particularly on the left-hand side. And I think if I was a Liverpool fan, I'd be very happy with that. You've got the three points. You got the job done in the second half. Two open play goals. And I thought that... Uh, Jota and, and Gakpo really, really showed some promise. I think Salah and Nunes have been a bit disappointing lately, but I do think some players did show up. But the second half was a lot better than the first half and Liverpool ended on a high. And maybe that will get them over that sort of mental blip they've had the last few games. Now, I'm going to be honest, I was watching the Manchester United Coventry game, 3 and up to Manchester United. Then I, I had Liverpool on the other screen, so I started looking at Liverpool game, thinking Manchester United have won the game, 3 and up with 20 minutes to go. But we're not here to talk about Man United. I've done a big rant about that over on my main channel. But I was keeping an eye on the Liverpool game. And I have to say, I thought the second half of Liverpool looked pretty good. Um, I saw a lot of negativity in my timeline from Liverpool fans. But I think in that second half, they looked a lot better. And one player that stood out for me was Cody Gappo. I will talk about Van Dijk because I do feel a bit sorry for Van Dijk. Because I think... He does a lot more than he's getting credit for. We will talk about Trent. I was actually live and I said Liverpool have got a free kick. No way Trent's scoring from here. Jinxed it. Also, when I was live, I said, oh, we won't bottle this with 3-0 you know, up. With When, when I went 3-1, I was like, we, you know, we're not going to concede two goals. Jinxed it. Also said, please don't concede a penalty. Jinxed it. I was the jinx today. I was the absolute jinx today. Uh, but we're not here to talk about my jinx, but we will talk about Trent. We will talk about Gravenberg and what he offers and, and why Gravenberg's performance was promising. But I think we will talk about Cody Gatbo, a guy that has been slandered a lot for Liverpool fans and he's been a bit hit and miss. But um, I always said with Cody Gatbo, I always wanted United to sign him because we needed a sort of backup at left wing. But I always said my biggest criticism of Klopp is that he always plays Gatbo centrally and not out wide. And I thought that Gatbo has always been sort of a wide player, but I guess in transitions, he's not maybe the best counter-attacking player. You maybe want him more central because of that, maybe. Uh, but he won seven duels today, created three chances, created one, did three dribbles, which was the most, made the most recoveries, got the assist, uh, accurate passes, very, very good passing chances, created dribbles, very, very good Gapo performance. And I think Gapo in Liverpool's blip, uh, these last two weeks has probably been one of Liverpool's sharpest players, even in even in other games. I think in the Atalanta game, there was things that he did that looked promising, even when the rest of the team wasn't good. Was it the Atalanta game or was it the Palace game? I don't know. It was one of the games that you were bad that I thought Gapo looked promising. Um, anyway, I what I like about Gapo and what he showed, and he looked a bit like the Gapo because I watched a lot of Gapo at PSG because I PSV because I was convinced he was going to end up at Manchester United, and yeah, well, I had a big rant when that happened. Um, but what I noticed about Gapo is he looked like. PSV gap who's very, very sharp with his movement. And what he does, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, is he's very good at creating separation to get rid of his marker. That's what he's very good at. He's very good at manipulating defenders, creating space, creating separation. And he's also sometimes able to create space for his opponents. And I think he's got a very good football intelligence, football brain, Cody Gapo. You know, he's a decent ball carrier. He's not like Diaz when it comes to ball carrying. Diaz could just dribble, dribble, insane. But he's a good cat ball carrier. But he's powerful. He's fast. He's powerful. Can carry the ball up the pitch. Very good at manipulating defenders and finding that space and sort of, you know, getting his marker away. And and when you when space opens up for Gapo, he does have some good ball striking, which we've not really seen at Liverpool. Um, but I think Gapo he showed, you know, good link up play. I thought his link up play was good. Obviously, he created the most chances today. He was a goal threat continuously. I mean, his goal numbers at PSV were a joke, and we've not seen that at Liverpool. But I think, you know, that could be seen at Liverpool if he can maybe get a run of games, get confidence that there's definitely a player in there. And Gapo is, he's so young, but he's very good at creating chances and he's very good at scoring. He gets goals, he gets assists. He's always been known for his IQ, his link up play and his ability to create separation. And I think on the left hand side where he wasn't having to just hold up the ball with his back to goal when he, he has the ability to do that, you see 
the best of Gapo. And I thought that Gapo had a very good game today. I thought he looked confident on the ball as well. And I think that's something which, you know, with a player that has been all right for Liverpool, but not groundbreaking, you can see the lack of confidence. But I thought Gapo was good and he deserves to start Liverpool's next game. I think there's going to be questions over what Liverpool's best front three is. There's no doubt in my mind that Nunes is a quality player, but he shouldn't be anywhere near starting. He's not been good the last few games. He wasn't good when he came on. That Jota with his clinical corners probably should be Liverpool striker, especially because at the end of the season, it's not about performance, it's about points. And Liverpool can have a great performance and Nunes can miss a few sitters. Or Liverpool can have a shocking performance, but Jota's very clinical and he can score. If you look at Arsenal, you look at Manchester City, City deserve to lose to Chelsea. Arsenal haven't been very good recently, even though Liverpool haven't been good. You know, Arsenal and Liverpool had that quality, particularly, sorry, Arsenal and City, particularly City, had that quality to, to sort of get it over the line. Jota's that kind of guy with that quality to get it over the line. I think Jota central... Gapo left and then you can argue Diaz on the right you can argue Salah on the right because Salah is Liverpool's best forward but he's not been right since he's been injured and Diaz gives that energy but I do think that Gapo was really good and I wanted to praise him because I think he's someone that gets a lot of stick from I've seen online from Liverpool fans uh, him and Gravenberch are getting a lot of stick probably the most online interestingly Endo who was all being praised a month ago is now getting loads of stick and I do think that Twitter's so reactionary. And I think, you know, Endo had a good second half. He didn't have a good first half. He's dropped off a bit. Um, but now people are slandering Endo. That had been good the majority of the season. I do think that Twitter can be a bit reactionary. And But I get when you're in a title race, you want your players to perform, all of them to perform in these games. Another player that was good was Trent Alexander-Arnold. I mean, he's a special kind of player. I sometimes think, had he been available for that Man United game, it could have gone another way. Because Trent's the kind of guy that, when it's 1-1 and you need that deadlock broken or 0-0, he's just like, bosh, he can score a worldy goal, he can score a worldy three kick. Um, and, he, you know, Liverpool looked like they were relieved to have him back. Not only that, but he can deliver in good crosses, he can come in central. He's such a technical player, such an intelligent player, but that free kick from Trent was was world class. And Liverpool needed that because they, they needed to go ahead. Obviously, they conceded 1-1 against Fulham and I got all excited thinking, yes, Man United are freeing them up and Liverpool are drawing. This is brilliant for me. Yeah, it wasn't brilliant for me in the end, was it? Um, but it was an unbelievable free kick. I was live. I said, he's not going to score that. Like, you know, and I saw people complaining that Harvey Elliott took the one before. And I thought, yeah, Trent should take free kicks, but probably not going to score from there. Shouldn't have underestimated Trent because he scored from there multiple times. Trent is, is probably, arguably, the best ball striker in football in terms of crossing, ball striking. His, his technique's unbelievable. And, and that goal was massive for Trent and he had a good performance. And Trent's a big game player. He can produce those big moments that Liverpool need. And what Liverpool needed the most actually came from Gravenberg. And I want to talk about Gravenberg because Gravenberg's a player that I rate very highly. I watched Ajax in Ten Hag's final season. Um, and that's why I rate Gravenberg so highly because I was like, this kid was like 19, 20. And I was like, damn, like it was Gravenberg and Bellingham, which were like the two midfield talents. And obviously Bellingham's career is quite a bit better than Gravenberg's but Gravenberg was ridiculous at Ajax and he kind of went to Barney he wasn't played I thought Gravenberg's first couple of performances at Liverpool were promising obviously it was Europa League and stuff in the group stage but they were promising and then I think he got injured then he's dropped off and his last few games for Liverpool have been poor but today was very encouraging signs from Gravenberg he looked a lot lot better he looked a lot more like himself and that goal might give him some confidence I think what I noticed about Gravenberg is he was controlling the ball well when he was keeping the ball well in the field and turning with the ball which is what he was so good at Ajax I think his touch and ball orientation was very much needed you know and also I remember seeing people saying sell Gavinberg to Galatasaray sell Gavinberg to Galatasaray and he's not he's not been groundbreaking at Liverpool but this is a 21 year old player he's, he's I think he's the same age as Harvey Elliott you know like that that's so young when you think about it I believe Gravenberg is 21 or is he 22 let me google this because he was 19 20 at Ajax so yeah he's 21 like, he, he I, Gavin Burke is 21. He's got a long way to go. There's, there's definitely a player that when Amarim comes in, Gavin Burke should be given one more season. You know, he barely played at Bayern. He had a promising start at Liverpool. Them had been pretty bad. Then looked good today. And the, to Gavin Burke's ceiling and his potential was sim from a young age and he's not quite hit that. But I think he's someone Liverpool should definitely not think about cashing in this summer. I think, you know, I see Liverpool fans, you know, one like a couple of weeks ago, it was so Gavin Burke, so Gapo. Today it's so Robertson, so Endo. These are these are the Twitter fans, of course. But you have to look at it from a general process of players go through good patches, bad patches. You know, how often are these good and bad patches? 
how, what's their age. You have to look at a multitude of things. But I thought Gravenberg, you know, fantastic goal, fantastic finish, showed promising signs, showed promising signs in his first few games. Definitely lacks the confidence, definitely needs a run of games to get in the swing of it just physically and, and defensive awareness-wise. But I think, you know, he's very good under pressure. He's very good at carrying the ball between the lines, very good at getting between the lines. And I think Liverpool versus Atalanta in that second half, because I only watched the second half of that game, this is the way game. I didn't watch the home game. I didn't watch the 3-0 loss because I was out, which was a shame. Um, but I think in that second half uh, versus Atalanta, Liverpool were playing a bit like Man United. You were passing it around the back and then you were boosting it up long, moving it up long, and you were just completely avoiding your midfield and build-up. And I thought Gravenberg today, when he got the ball, he kept the ball in midfield, which is something Liverpool hadn't done very well their last few games. And that isn't really Gravenberg's best trait. It's not like a ball retention specialist or anything but I think he does very well at controlling the ball with his back to goal under pressure but he's quite a good ball carrier and I think he helped Liverpool because I think sometimes when Liverpool are trying to score open play goals they go too direct always long ball always long ball opposition's keeper could just pick it up it's almost like they were frustrated that they hadn't scored an open play goal and they were going too direct and too long and I saw that at times in the first half but today I think Gravenberg added a little bit of you know ball orientation to the squad if that's the word his ball orientation his touch really sort of helped um, at Liverpool today. I just think defensively he obviously needs to improve, uh, athletically needs to improve, but that might just be through age, lack of lack of minutes recently as well. But I do think that he's a he's a good player and I think he's slowly coming back. But the thing about Gravin Birch is his potential is crazy. And Liverpool fans might forget that, but his he does have a really, really good potential. Um, obviously, Van Dijk, I thought, had a really good game as well. I wanted to just talk about Van Dijk quickly. Jota had a really good game. Jota's clinical. Jota, Jota, you know, missed a chance, but he looked back to his best. He sometimes just needs to get his head up. I think he's just rusty, come back from injury. Had Jota stay fit, I think Liverpool would be top of the league right now. I, I had Jota stay fit, I think Liverpool would have won the league because he's clinical. And Liverpool have dominated defence and midfield and attacking signs, but they hadn't been clinical. And that's what Jota gives you. But I want to talk to that, about Van Dijk because I think Van Dijk was good. I think that he gets brought down when Liverpool concede a goal. But one thing I've noticed about Van Dijk is he's played with Kwanzaa, Matip, Bradley, Gomez, you know, all these inexperienced players because Liverpool have had a lot of injuries around the back. And Van Dijk's been the one consistent. And he's the guy that's leading on when he's got Kwanzaa and he's, he's playing with a back line of Kwanzaa and, and you know, Bradley and, and, and very inexperienced players because Trent's been out, Matip's been out, Canate's been out. And, you know, he, he always does a job and I think he's been good this whole time for Liverpool. I think he really has. And I think Liverpool have conceded a few silly goals and they've had a few defensive errors. It's not just that they're not clinical. They have had a few defensive errors, but I don't actually think that Van Dijk is at fault, really. I think he's probably been Liverpool's best player this season. Maybe McAllister, but I think as the constant, you could argue Van Dijk and afford he had a good game. But anyway, that's my thoughts on the game. I think overall that was just a massive win for Liverpool because the mental and scoring an open play goal and that puts the pressure on City. If City drops points midweek you'll be thinking like damn like you could catch Arsenal as well because Arsenal aren't super convincing I know Liverpool aren't super convincing but it's the team that gets all their points between now and the end of the season wins because I guarantee you there's there, there's two teams there's two more teams dropping points in this title race and we don't know who it'll be